So in 2019, I went to the gym by myself for the first time to buy my membership. And I remember walking to the gym, feeling this huge weight in my chest, telling myself, what if I don't make it? What if I fail? Over time and through trial and error, I began to understand the key concept that I'm about to share with you right now. The problem isn't failing. What truly matters is how you handle failure, how you react to it, and if you let it control your life. More importantly, it's about the negative emotions that failure triggers within you rather than the actual act of failing. And today we're going to discuss exactly that, the perception of failure, the negative feelings associated to it, and how not to let it control your life. First of all, the way you view failure is way more important than the failure itself. Failure is defined as the lack of success which means that it doesn't have to be permanent, it's just a lack. And when you're starting something for the first time, you like everything. You like the clarity, the skills, the knowledge, and the method. And except for the unexpected luck, 99% of the time you'll fail the first time you try something new. This isn't to say that you're destined to fail though, and that there's a crucial distinction to understand here. Quite the opposite, in fact, failing is necessary because it just means that you don't know how to do this Thing yet. Failure almost never means that you will never be able to do it. And you fail until you win. Failure is not to be avoided because it's a prerequisite for success. So the first thing to understand is that failure isn't as negative as you think. It's just feedback. It's data. It's you trying and your environment telling you that you're not ready yet. And the problem with how most people perceive failure is that they hand over their power. They let past feedback dictate their current or future performance. And this doesn't make any sense when you truly think about it. Yet you're doing this consciously or unconsciously on some level. And in reality, what happens is that as you try to engage in something, your brain brings back all the memories of you not succeeding at this thing that you're trying to engage in. And now you feel overwhelmed and paralyzed. And it feels like someone is whispering in your ear, that you can't do it on loop. And this makes sense if we try to adopt an evolutionary perspective. You see, this comes from the fact that your brain is designed for preservation, for survival. It doesn't want to take any risks that could be detrimental to you. More than that, it's always trying to save you as much energy as possible. That is why if you fail once or more, your brain will set this activity as high risk with a very few chance of reward, coming to the conclusion that it's better not to engage in this thing. It will then proceed to use past failure as images, reminders, to convince you to not engage back in this thing. Keep in mind that your brain is not the enemy here. Its only purpose is to keep you alive. The problem lies in the inadaptation of your brain to the current demands of modern society. And if you want to know more about this topic, I've made a whole video on it, link in the description. Second thing, you're too close to failure. Failure, again, is feedback, it's data, and treating it as such is going to profoundly affect the perception and the interpretation that you're making of it. The problem is that the emotion linked to failure are strong and probably too strong. As most of the time when failure arises, there's a deep and negative emotion linked to it, whether it's shame, fear, sadness, deception, humiliation, or a combination of uh, several. The emotion is the real obstacle, and people will focus way too much on this negative emotion, or rather mix of negative emotions, and this leads to anchoring this past negative feeling, magnifying its impact on your current life. For example, let's say that you tend to be socially anxious, and you try and going to the gym once, but because the pressure was too high, you didn't step foot in the building, which is exactly what happened back in 2019 for me. And now you keep reminding yourself of that failure, which triggers feelings of guilt, shame, and soon this will be so strong that it starts to become part of your identity. I'm not an active person, I can't exercise, I'm not good at sports, I'll never be, whatever. Meanwhile, you just tried once and you stopped before entering the building. Adopting a statistical and rational perspective, this just doesn't make any sense. Imagine a scientist trying something one time, stopping and saying that this shit doesn't work. Everyone will tell him that he just didn't try enough times to even know if this thing remotely works. And the problem is that us as humans, we have a tendency 
You think more emotionally than rationally when it comes to failure. This leads us to submerge and overwhelm ourselves with constant reminders of past negative experiences, when in all objectivity, this situation isn't that big of a deal. And yet, if you've replayed it more than 50 times in your mind, it becomes this giant monster of humiliation. And the solution here is to learn how to reframe the negative thought using absolute perception. And for that, you need to learn how to distance yourself from it first. What truly happened is the question that you need to ask yourself over and over again, instead of just referring to the negative thoughts your mind has associated with the event. Focus on reality, not your perception and your interpretation of it. It's hard, but trust me, it will help you immensely in all realms of your life. And it's really a skill worth practicing. In our example, I went to the gym. I stopped in the parking lot. I looked at the gym and then felt overwhelmed and I just went back home. Stating the facts like this de-dramatizes the whole scene. And by doing so, you create enough space between the memory and the negative emotion to take an objective look at what happened instead of just drowning in fear and guilt whenever you bring back the episode. Now, your mission is to identify the recurring thought pattern and you have to write them down, make them real, and then reframe them accordingly to what really happened. Take an objective look at them and assess if they're useful and realistic. Spoiler, most of the time they're not and your job is to correct them gradually. For instance, you might take away from the experience that you'll never be fit, you're the worst in sports, and you're condemned to live in this out of shape body for the rest of your life, whatever. Meanwhile, all of these cascades from one time, one situation where you try and going to the gym once, and it didn't work because you felt too anxious and overwhelmed that day. Instead, cut the loop, and introduce a new productive thought. Yeah, I felt overwhelmed and I didn't go to the gym, but this doesn't mean that I'm doomed to passive existence where I'm out of shape for the rest of my whole life. It just means that I have to try again and learn how to handle the pressure better. Now, by using this process, you'll be able to desensitize yourself, deactivating the negative emotional pattern, which will over time allow you to try again without feeling paralyzed by past emotions hopefully now do not let failure become one of your characteristics because if there's one thing that you can be a hundred percent sure of is the fact that you'll miss sleep fail again and a lot of times and if you don't it probably means that you're not trying enough altogether the secret here is to just be okay with failing because if you've identified recurring negative thought patterns you're realizing that Failure doesn't have any real impact of your current situation. Easier said than done, I know, because it lies in something much deeper than just failure. It links back to identity. And again, I want to be clear on the fact that the only thing that has the power to truly disturb you is your emotional response to failure, not failure itself. Therefore, if you learn to deactivate the negative emotions, you'll be able to to try again without feeling too much pressure, without being too overwhelmed. And the issue arises when you perceive failure as too profound and you, because of constant reminiscence, start defining yourself using failure to do so. This is dangerous. And if you do this for an extended period of time, you'll remodel your identity around that failure, resulting in you acting out this past failure over and over again, as your brain has encoded that this failure is so important that it needs to be part of your persona. And if you don't want that, which trust me, you really don't, you need to de-aggravate the intensity and the frequency of your emotional response to failure. But for that to happen, you have to expose yourself and be willing to try again in good faith. This is the hardest part. Identifying and reframing emotions associated with failure is one thing. Be willing to try again with your heart open is another. So let's return back to our example. The plan for me was clear. It was to go back to the gym, the exact same gym to be more precise, reduce my emotional response, stay calm and rational, and enter the building to finally buy my membership. Now this may take you one, two, or 10 attempts, the speed doesn't matter at first. The only thing that matters is that you're able to control more and more your emotional reaction to failure. 
and you really want to expose yourself to the situation and learn how to slowly diminish and control the negative reaction that the situation will trigger and once you feel in control enough not in total control because that that never happens but in control enough don't wait for life to send you a fairy okay just go use your legs use your arms focus on absolute perception which is reality and don't let yourself get stuck in the negative loop don't let failure define your persona you need to make a clear distinction between identity and failure otherwise your failure will start dictating the outcomes of your life again you don't want that to happen what has happened to you has no direct control over your current decisions. And if you want to make the best out of every situation, even when failure is involved, you need to focus on building what's called grit. And grit is the passion and perseverance for long-term goals. You need to cultivate a meaningful long-term vision that will serve as a protection for your identity. This just means finding a solid reason to endure repeated failures and still be fine with whatever you're doing. This vision will act as a safety net against the negative thoughts that will arise from failure. Because the real issue is that if you fail without any reasons to engage in the first place, chances are that the negative emotions will take over and prevent you from engaging back again to correct that. Now, returning to our example, imagining your long-term vision is to be fit so you can play with your kids or have a better life quality, better health span. This will be a good enough reason for you to try again and again until it works despite failing. On the other hand, if you're just trying to go to the gym because you want to become the new Instagram influencer, this won't last against failure because this isn't about grit. This isn't about perseverance. This is about social validation. And all of this goes back to a fundamental concept, which is the reason the reason, the ultimate purpose behind why you're engaging in something. And this reason is most of the time greater than the thing that you're trying to do itself. Now attach yourself to this deep emotional reason to change and you will be able to sustain the process. But that implies finding the reason first. And the good thing is that with willpower and introspection, anyone is capable of doing so. Failure isn't an end point. It defines the beginning, actually. Failure means that you're not quite there yet, but it's an indicator saying to you that you could be there if you tried enough times. Dive into the process of managing past, present, and upcoming failures to make the most out of them and build a life where fear, humiliation, guilt, and regret do not dictate your outcomes. So I hope this helps. Trust the process.